Fleetwood Mac might be notorious for their romantic drama, but would you expect the same from the Rolling Stones or Billy Joel? These are some of rock and roll's greatest conflicts of the heart. As one of the original 1970s New York punk bands, the Ramones helped define the sound of the burgeoning, provocative rock subgenre. They stripped down rock to its foundation of guitar, bass, and drums, and played their instruments with loud and reckless abandon. They wore matching jeans and leather jackets, as lead singer Joey Ramone wailed about the annoyances of modern life. The Ramones had a tight sound, with each band member working hard to break the mold from the music they'd grown up on. It's not real anymore. It's not out from the gut and soul anymore. And you want to do something about changing it and making things better. Off stage, however, the Ramones didn't always get along. According to Marky Ramone's memoir, Punk Rock, Blitzkrieg, Joey Ramone and guitarist Johnny Ramone had a dispute that unfortunately wasn't resolved before the deaths of both men. Billboard notes that Joey dated a woman named Linda for more than two years. She then left him to couple with Johnny, ultimately marrying him and taking the name Linda Ramone. As Marky recalls in his memoir, the two didn't speak to each other again and refused to sit near each other when traveling in their van. After striking it big with Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Stephen Stills embarked on a successful solo career. He scored a top 20 hit in 1970 with Love the One You're With. Rita Coolidge, the sultry 70s rock songwriter known for We're All Alone and Your Love Has Lifted Me Higher and Higher, sang backup on Stills' hit. Stills' bandmate, Graham Nash, was in the studio at the time the song was being recorded. Nash and Coolidge casually chatted between takes, and Nash invited her to come to see their concert the next night. Nash was staying with Stills, and he asked Coolidge to call him on the day of the concert to confirm the plans. When she did, Stills answered and told her Nash suddenly couldn't make it. He escorted her to the show instead. They began dating, but the relationship turned rocky. After she called it quits with Stills, Coolidge gave Nash a call, where she learned that Stills had deliberately interfered with her plans with his bandmate that fateful night. After that, she began seeing Nash officially. While staying in a motel, Stills wrote Love Rita on a bathroom mirror and took a potentially lethal amount of pills which landed him in a hospital. After he recovered, Coolidge and Nash went to see Stills at his home. According to Coolidge's memoir, Delta Lady, she wrote, Stephen just came out swinging. Somebody separated them and pulled Stephen off. Before they found the soft rock sound that would influence countless albums and help them achieve icon status in the 70s, Fleetwood Mac was part of the British blues band scene. The band was founded in the late 60s by Mick Fleetwood and John McVie. The group brought in numerous guitarists in its early years, hiring Bob Weston in time for their 1973 album, Penguin. According to Cosmic Magazine, Fleetwood married model Jenny Boyd in 1970, the sister of model Patty Boyd. Fleetwood and Jenny Boyd started a family, but the drummer was so busy with his recording and touring schedule, while also in the midst of battling a cocaine addiction, that Jenny Boyd was left unhappy and unfulfilled. Mick and I would pass each other on the stairs and not say hello or acknowledge each other. While dealing with her own addiction issues, Boyd began an extramarital affair with Bob Weston. According to The Guardian, Fleetwood was so upset when he found out about the fling that he fired Weston from Fleetwood Mac. Jenny Boyd then broke things off with Weston and tried to make her marriage to Fleetwood work. By the end of the 70s, they'd ultimately divorce, remarry, and divorce again. By the mid-1970s, the blues-oriented Fleetwood Mac reinvented itself as a radio-friendly pop rock band. They hired the romantically attached duo Buckingham Nicks, composed of guitarist Lindsey Buckingham and singer Stevie Nicks. Fleetwood Mac's 1975 self-titled album sold 7 million copies, bringing the group fame, fortune, and the weighty task of having to write a follow-up to their hit record. Their next album, 1977's Rumors, would sell 20 million copies and become one of the top-selling LPs of all time. Billboard reports that many of its songs are about the relationship crimes the members of Fleetwood Mac committed against each other during the recording of Rumors. By the time the band shot a cover photo for a March 1977 issue of Rolling Stone, Buckingham and Nicks had split up. Depicting the group all lying on a bed together, Nicks refused to lounge next to Buckingham. Nicks said, so I curl up next to Mick for the next three hours. After the shoot, she and Buckingham reconnected, but the regrouping didn't last. 
Nick spoke of their turbulent relationship on Oprah's Masterclass, saying, No matter what it takes, we're going to keep Fleetwood Mac together. And our breaking up is not going to break up this band. Nick's and Fleetwood felt pulled to one another, and they had a brief romance during a tour break in 1978. When they formed in the early 1960s, the Rolling Stones produced their innovative combination of hard rock, R&B, and blues, with a double rhythm guitar attack provided by Brian Jones and Keith Richards. Not only would Jones and Richards play the same instrument, but they'd find that they also shared the same taste in romantic partners. In the early 1960s, 22-year-old Italian model Anita Pallenberg booked a job near Munich, Germany, and her photographer suggested she see the then-up-and-coming group The Rolling Stones that evening. At the show, she instantly bonded with Jones, so Pallenberg accompanied the guitarist on a Stones tour. Jones was prone to suffering waking nightmares from the drug LSD and had a violent episode in Morocco. Pallenberg recalled, Brian got sick and ended up in hospital. He had asthma. So Keith and I drove on and left him there, and that was when we had a physical relationship. That connection turned into a 15-year relationship, and the couple went on to have two children. According to Far Out, it was around the time that Pallenberg dumped Jones for Richards that the Rolling Stones fired him because of a problematic drug habit and numerous arrests. A year later in 1969, Jones was found dead in his swimming pool. Beginning as a folk act in the early 60s and morphing into a hippie-based pop rock outfit from the late 60s, the Mamas and the Papas hit it big that decade. Their four-part harmonies and powerful songs like Monday Monday and California Dreamin' elevated them to counterculture classic status. The Mamas and the Papas' music was smooth, gentle, and calming, but the inner workings of the band were chaotic and heartbreaking. According to People, Papa John Phillips left his wife Sue early in the band's existence for Holly Michelle Gilliam. Vanity Fair notes that, at the time, he was almost 30 and she was 17. Phillips married the teenager and brought her into his vocal group, where she took on the name Mama Michelle Phillips. Meanwhile, romantic feelings swirled around the other half of the group. Mama Cass Elliot harbored a huge crush on Papa Denny Doherty. But Doherty had strong feelings for Michelle, and the two ended up having an extramarital affair, according to CNN. Elliot angrily confronted Phillips about getting together with the man she liked. The band broke up in 1970. As the hair metal era was dying down in the early 1990s, guitarist Richie Kotzen joined one of the genre's biggest bands, Poison. He replaced C.C. DeVille, who was fired for his substance abuse issues, according to AllMusic. However, Kotzen only played on one Poison album, 1993's Native Tongue. He was fired during the band's promotional concert tour, which was apparently all well and good with the guitarist. He told Radio Forest, It was a great experience, but imagine you just turned 21, and now you're in a band that already sold 20 million albums. I was already signed to Interscope, and in my mind, I was just thinking, when am I going to make my solo record? So it was a weird situation for me coming in. While Kotzen publicly makes it seem like he was happy to leave Poison, the rest of the band saw things differently. Metal Edge reported that right before Poison was supposed to play a show in Sacramento, California in July of 1993, drummer Ricky Rocket found out that his former fiance, who had called off their engagement, had been seeing Kotzen. Rocket said, They'd been together behind my back. I was getting over her, but this was a smack in the face. Billy Joel would eventually become a solo pop superstar, but in the early 1970s, he was one half of a psychedelic progressive rock duo called Attila. The duo formed after the demise of Joel and Small's previous band, The Hassles. Joel played organ and keyboard while bandmate John Small played the drums. AllMusic describes the group's 1970 self-titled LP as, quote, the worst album released in the history of rock and roll. Attila never made another record and broke up later in 1970 amidst some tremendous band drama. According to the New York Times, Joel got close with Elizabeth Weber, who returned the singer's affections despite already being married to John Small. After divorcing Small, she and Joel married in 1973. While the couple would divorce in 1982, the former Attila bandmates would eventually patch things up. 
Small went on to direct four of Joel's music videos and two of his concert films. John Small is very active and is a very good friend of mine and a close friend. And because we both share an ex-wife, we have a lot of good stories to swap. The artsy, brainy new wave band Japan formed in the UK in the late 1970s. They found some success in their native country with big top 40 hits like Quiet Life, Ghosts, I Second That Emotion, and Visions of China. They enjoyed only minor, cult-level fame in the U.S., splitting up in 1982. According to The Guardian, frontman David Sylvian said Japan ended because it had run its course creatively. But for bass guitarist Mick Karn, there were other signs that it was time to leave the band behind. In 1982, Karn told Zigzag about his partner at the time, photographer Yuka Fuji, saying, For the first time I met a girl, and we were living together for quite a while, and it was absolutely perfect. However, much like his time in Japan, Karn's blissful love affair would not last. Reportedly, the day before Japan was supposed to leave for tour, the band bickered heavily about their stage layout and discussed breaking up. That same day, Fuji informed Karn that while he was off on tour, she would be moving her things out of their home and moving them into the home of her new romantic partner, David Sylvian. <laughs> 